Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here. This right here is one of the worst gaming computers I have ever built. And when I say worst, I don't mean like it's the worst performing because it's actually pretty impressive when it comes to the benchmarks. I mean worst in a sense that it shouldn't even really exist because it's made up of a really odd mixture of parts. But lo and behold, it sits here right in front of me fully assembled. And that's because myself and a handful of other tech tubers decided to come together for a friendly build competition. We wanted to see who could build the best system to put a RTX 3080 into. Uh, the only catch is that we only had $300 to gather the remaining parts to go with this graphics card. So in this video, we're going to check out my build. Uh, but before we get to that, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Antlion Audio, creators of the Mod Mic, the boom microphones that can be attached to almost anything you want. Take your favorite pair of headphones, VR headset, or whatever else you fancy, find a flat surface to attach the magnetic base to, and instantly turn it into a sound recording peripheral. The Mod Mic comes in three different versions, the wireless, USB, and universal 3.5mm. All the audio in this pre-roll is actually being recorded by the Mod Mic Wireless, and this is all the way over in my echoey bathroom. This is raw and unedited, it hasn't been altered in any way, so this is the high quality sound that you can expect from Mod Mic. If you're interested in this or any of the other products that they have to offer, definitely check out the links in the description below. Uh, but other than that, back to the video. So the channels participating in this competition are myself, Coalition Gaming, Greg Salazar, Ostox Hardware, Scatterbolt, Tech by Matt, The Toasty Bros, and Zax Tector. To quickly go over the rules, we each had $300 for our total budget. We had to include the cost of each item and the shipping costs, but we decided to exclude sales tax from the total since we all have different tax rates and we wanted to make it as fair as possible so no one had an advantage or disadvantage. Also, all the parts had to be bought online so that similar to excluding taxes, uh, everyone was on the same playing field and had access to the same parts. This kind of eliminates any once in a lifetime lucky deals that are normally only found in the local market. Uh, we were free to use, you know, like Amazon, Newegg, eBay, Hardware Swap, OfferUp Nationwide, basically anything online so long as the item was going to be shipped to us. Going over the budget, even by one cent would result in being penalized. We imposed 10% knockdowns on the final score for every $10 bracket that was exceeded, and I'll show you on screen what I mean by that. Basically, it was very important to stick within the budget and not go over at all. I'll have the rest of the rules shown on screen in case you want to pause and read through them, but I think I've covered the most important ones, so let's move on. I want to give a really big disclaimer here. I put this build together solely for this competition to score the highest that I could possibly score while remaining within the budget and following the rule set. Now having said that, I would not necessarily recommend this build exactly as I put it together if you want to use this as a daily driver system. Because as you've seen a little bit, I did have to make some sacrifices and some questionable decisions uh, on some of the parts. But here was my thought process going into the competition. $300 for all the parts minus the graphics card is actually a decent amount of money. At this price point, because it does not include the cost of the graphics card, you're breaking into newer parts territory. And when I say newer parts, I don't mean like the most brand new current gen stuff, but you can still get some stuff that's within the last few years instead of having to stick to like older Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge stuff or Xeons that, you know, most of the low budget build formulas are typically made of. Um, so after doing some window shopping online, I settled on going with more recent parts and this is what I got. For the processor, I went with a used Ryzen 5 1600 AF. This has 6 cores, 12 threads, with a 3.2 GHz base clock with the ability to single core boost up to 3.6 GHz. I found this on eBay for $120 with free shipping, but after planning out the build and finding all the parts I wanted to go with, the max I could spend on the processor was $110, which was already over one third of the total budget. But if I could get it for that price, I would be able to make it work. So I decided to put in an offer of $110, which was only $10 less than what it was listed for. If the seller didn't accept, I would have had to jump down to the Ryzen 3 3100, which was going for $110 at B&H Photo at the time. Luckily, the seller accepted, so all was good. I'm using the included stock Ray Stealth cooler with this build because it's the obvious choice working with a budget this low, and I literally had no extra money to spend on a better one. The motherboard I went with is a used Gigabyte AB350 Gaming. I found this on Reddit Hardware Swap. Initially, the seller made a listing of several items, with this being one of them, and he was asking for $65 ship for it. With the way I worked out the budget, I only had $53 to spend, so I shot him a message with that as the best offer for the motherboard shipped, and he accepted. If I couldn't get this one, I would have picked up one of the A320 options on eBay, since there were a few of them floating for around $50, but I'm really glad I was able to pull off the B350 chipset though, because it's going to give me the ability to overclock. 
From memory, I picked up a brand new kit of 16GB super plain looking Oloi RAM at 3000MHz CL16 on Amazon. This was insanely cheap at $45.99 with free shipping. The crazy part about this is that this is regular pricing, especially on a lot of these Oloi memory kits. They're regularly under $50 for 16 gigs, and we're talking about brand new here. This brand new set of RAM was cheaper than anything else I could find across any of the other websites for used RAM. For storage, I went with a 500 gigabyte 7200 RPM Western Digital Mechanical Drive. There are no benchmarks when it comes to storage, so I went with the lowest price drive that I could find that could hold the operating system as well as all the benchmarks on it at the same time since that's one of the requirements. And this one worked out to be $9.95 with free shipping on eBay. So this is a used drive, but oh my goodness, look at that manufactured date, 2008. But it was still in good working condition. I checked its health with Crystal Disk Info and Hard Disk Sentinel and there were no issues. It had nearly 30,000 hours on it with over 3,000 power on cycles. The power supply is by far the sketchiest part of this build. I only had $50 budgeted out for it and I could not find a unit from a reputable brand that had at least 600 watts, new or used, so I had to start looking to lesser known brands. I came across this Ares Gaming power supply on Amazon for $49.99. It's 650 watts and bronze rated with decent Amazon reviews, which really doesn't count for anything since none of those reviewed include the necessary equipment to actually properly test and review it. This was definitely a gamble, but according to the label on the side of the unit, the amperage rating on the 12 volt rail wasn't too bad. It's 49 amps, and this is normally where the sketchier units start to reveal themselves as actually sucking. But this unit, at 49 amps, this should be more than enough for the Ryzen 5 1600 AF and the RTX 3080 combined. This of course assumes that the rating on the label is actually true and it's not just uh, pumped up numbers. Uh, but at this point, I didn't really have a choice. This was the only unit that I could find that would possibly work in the price range. I didn't want to take a, a knockdown on my performance by going over budget. So I went with it and I crossed my fingers. All the cables are completely black, so that's one nice thing about this power supply coming in at its price. But unfortunately, there's only one cable providing PCIe power. Both of the 8-pin connectors are from that single cable and it has to be used for the graphics card, which isn't ideal, but it kind of is what it is. I didn't have any other choice. Knowing the expected power draw on the whole system, since I've already made a couple of videos with the 3080, um, I was okay with this unit because I knew there's still going to be some headroom in case the unit wasn't as good as it was. Uh, apparently rated for. During the benchmarks, the total power draw from the wall never exceeded 600 watts, and this lines up with how much power the system should be pulling after efficiency factoring uh, is taken into account, which is at max around 500 watts. I want to make an official statement here, and I want to be very clear, I do not officially recommend this power supply. If you buy this, buy it at your own risk. I am not responsible for what happens to your system long term. I bought it because it worked within the budget and it was for this competition, but for a long-term system that you're going to be using for years to come, you're going to want to think a little bit harder about it. And last but not least, we have the case. I'm using the cheapest case I could find, the DIY PC Solo T2R on Newegg. This is a pretty iconic budget case. It has a very distinct look and most people will recognize it from a mile away. And surprisingly, this is actually my first time ever using it. This costs $30.98 with free shipping on Newegg and its quality pretty much reflects the price. It's the textbook definition of a bargain bin case. Breakaway PCIe brackets, very little room behind the motherboard tray for cable management. There's so little room that the side panel has one of those pockets formed out uh, to accommodate for it. There's virtually no foresight for cable management whatsoever. These are all the common signs of a cheap case. Some of the positives are that it does include two fans, one of which has LED lights, the front one, and the hard drive cage actually has tools design, so at least there's that. Oh yeah, and how could I forget? We also have the Founders Edition RTX 3080. And I'm gonna assume 3080 coverage has been shoved down your throat by this point, so I'll spare you the details since most people already know everything about this card. This graphics card needs no further introduction. It's a beast of a card that deserves a much, much better system than I'm giving it, but here we are. So now let's look over the build list and price summary. My total came in at $299.89. Like I said earlier, I was working to the extreme limit of the given budget with only 11 cents to spare. I didn't have wiggle room to get a SSD, a more reputable power supply, or a better case. This was the best that I could find given the window of time we had to shop, which was about a week. And the money was definitely focused on the CPU and motherboard as those would yield the best returns in performance. 
And adding in the $700 Founders Edition RTX 3080, that brings this build's value to $1,000, making it a completely ridiculous gaming PC where the graphics card accounts for over two thirds of the total price. Building the system was pretty much as expected given the cheap DIY PC case. Cable routing wasn't ideal. The only options to clean it up was to shove the excess cables in the hard drive cage or try to stuff it behind the motherboard tray and make use of that pocket they formed in the side panel. One benefit to this case though was that there wasn't a lack of room at all. The graphics card, as big as it was, fit in there with no problems. The full ATX motherboard also fit with no issues. It's just that the cables were kind of hard to hide and they're very, very visible. Normally, I'd call this part of the video the Glamour Shots B-roll portion, but there's definitely nothing glamorous about this build. Alright, so let's start talking about some performance. I was able to get a 3.7 GHz all-core overclock on the Ryzen 5 1600 with the stock cooler. Any higher than that would cause crashing during the CPU heavy benchmarks. The Oloy RAM was running at the 3 GHz profile that it's rated at, and the RTX 3080 was running at an additional 125 MHz on the core and 500 MHz on the memory. We chose benchmarks that were all automated so that the test would have minimal variables outside of our control, and the final scores would also be able to compare side by side this way. We have a good mix of benchmarks that test the CPU, GPU, and then a mix of both of them together. The first CPU test we've got is Cinebench R20, testing both the multi and single core performance. In multi core, my build scored 2886, and in single core, it scored 386. The next CPU test is the Blender benchmark. We tested version 2.9 choosing the CPU as the hardware, and we ran the BMW and FishyCat tests. Note that we want lower times in this test. For my build, the BMW test took 4 minutes and 53 seconds to complete, and the FishyCat test took 7 minutes and 4 seconds, for a combined time of 11 minutes and 57 seconds, or 717 seconds. Next up is 3 Mark Time Spy, which defaults to 1440p and is a DX12-centric test. We are using the combined total score reported at the top of the summary screen for this, and my build scored 13,887. For the remainder of the titles tested, we decided to run at 1080p resolution, as this puts more stress on the CPU since it's forced to try to push out higher frame rates. Uh, this would in turn give a bigger spread between our scores. Since we all have the same GPU, this would really show the differences between the rest of the system, like RAM capacity and like processors we chose. First up is Rainbow Six Siege, which was tested at the preset ultra settings. We're reporting the final average frame rate at the end screen, which my build came in at 309 FPS. In the Final Fantasy 15 benchmarking tool, we ran at the high quality settings. This isn't a benchmark that I typically do, as I don't think it's as popular of a title that a lot of people care to see benchmarks for, but I actually really like it since it's completely free and it's fully automated, so for a competition like this, it's perfect. It's a pretty demanding test that runs for roughly 7 minutes, and we're reporting the final score at the end screen, which my build came in at 10,492. The last benchmark for the competition is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is another really good test since it's completely automated, and it's included with the free trial version of the game, with no time limit, so you can do as many benchmarks as you want without paying a single cent. We ran at the highest preset settings with Ray Trace Shadow quality set to Ultra, and the score being reported is the average at the end screen. My build came in at an average of 79 FPS. And there you have it, those were my scores for the competition. I think the Ryzen 1600 performed really well, especially given the price point we had to work with, and I hope it'll be able to hold its own compared to what everyone else is uh, building. As of recording this video, I actually have no idea what the competition looks like. We all kept our builds and even our scores a complete secret leading up to the reveal videos. Uh, so I'll be watching all the other videos at the same time as you all are and finding out what everyone else did. I've got some tough competition, so we'll see how I do in the end. 
And the way we're doing the scoring is based on the best score that is achieved on each test. So the person with the highest score would receive the full point for it, and all the other scores lined up would be scaled down accordingly, depending on how much worse they were to compare to that best score. And at the end, all the points are going to be added up, and the person with the highest score is going to be crowned the winner. All the other build videos will be linked down in the description as they go live, and we'll likely make a playlist for all of them, so be sure to check that out. We've also recruited a special guest judge, Brett from UFD Tech, who will be compiling all of our scores and crowning a winner. That will be in a separate video over on his channel, so definitely go over there and subscribe and be on the lookout for that. And with that said, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know your thoughts on the build and how you would have approached it if you were given the same budget and same rule set that we were all working to. Would you have gone with a different platform or maybe a different processor? Uh, and also, who do you think will take the crown and win this competition of all the channels that are participating? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And I want to thank you all as always for watching and supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you all down in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye.